Hey guys, Ooh, Wade Bush Hudson here. How do you like the new do? Got rid of all the hair. Just went with a one buzz cut all the way around. Got completely ripped off. I feel totally taken. Took like four seconds for it to shave off my entire hair. But anyway, got the new do. It's light, nice for summer. My crappy receding hairline is no longer a big issue. <laughs> Anyway, I uh, just thought I'd give some thoughts on uh, first Panini and then the NBA playoffs. Uh, first of all, I was just I was just watching this Panini Crusade video uh, from Chris, and uh, you know I was I was just seeing and they flipped it over and it had the numbering on the back and it was just like some of the Skybox inserts where they had the numbering. They had a white box and then that ruffled edge around, uh, ruffled bubble around it. Um, and so I was just thinking, it finally hit me that Panini is like the Chinese knockoff versions for watches. So it's like, you, you look at a guy and he's like, oh, that's a great roll. Oh, wait, that's a Chinese knockoff. And it's, it's like, as soon as you just take a second look at it, it's like, oh, crap. And then you just, it hits you. It's like Elite Black Box. It's like, oh, my gosh, that just looks like UD Black. Oh, wait, no, it's not. That's, that's, that's my new revelation is that the, Panini is the knockoff, Chinese knockoff version in the card collecting company. They take all these really great ideas from the past, from all these really cool companies. So, like, they took the past and present. Uh, they took that from Topps' like, 1957-58 variation from their Topps archives, uh, stuff like that. Um, and, you know, Elite Black. Uh, and then their the, um, Absolute Memorabilia is just like the... Uh, Ultimate Collection, but a real knockoff version of that, you know, the four-pack combo thing like that. Um, uh, yeah. National Treasures is sort of an exquisite knockoff. Again, sticker autographs versus on-card autographs. Um, you know, 65 jersey cards in a National Treasures box, and then you got, like, uh, if, if maybe one, so they're actually kind of rare. Um, and then, so like the new Crusade, I talked about that rough edge, you know, they took, you know, Fleer Skybox's uh, old numbering. Uh, same thing on the 101, they now have the, on the 101 symbol, instead of putting 1 slash 1, they have the 101, like Upper Deck had it, for their 101s. It's all just like the Chinese knockoff versions. Um, so, you know, like you have authentic game used gear from Tops and Upper Deck, and then you have the well, it's sort of used, like at a event. At some point, we shoved a thousand jerseys onto each of these guys, so it was all used. Same thing. Anyway, NBA playoffs. Uh, just watched Game Six. Uh, what an amazing game! Uh, to me, this series is boiled down to nothing more than uh, elite talent versus elite teamwork. So you have the Spurs with the elite teamwork. You have uh, Miami with that elite talent. Incredibly, Dwayne Wade and LeBron James, uh, two of the most talented players in the league. And then you've got that teamwork of Danny Green, Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker, Tim Duncan, and Greg Popovich, just a mastermind, just a, just a master beyond any belief uh, behind it. Um, absolutely brilliant uh, to take what Eric Spolstra has taught um, Miami to do, which is to not settle for the jump shot and to always attack the lane. And so all he's done is he's just made the made just a clump of players uh, like Popovich has in the middle of that paint, just daring LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, uh, and uh, to shoot the ball or pass the ball. It's been absolutely brilliant on the part of Popovich's. Uh, and you know the problem with Spolstra is he hasn't adapted to that. Uh, he keeps on trying to force it in with Dwayne Wade and LeBron James, and you can't do that. You've got to get another shooter in there and have either either LeBron or Jane, or uh, Dwayne Wade uh, in the game, at, but they can't be in at the same time. That's the problem. Then you can space the floor with your shooters, with Ray Allen, with Mike Miller, who played really, really well, and I, I had no idea why Mike Miller wasn't even seen in that overtime period. He should have been in there. He was playing monster defense and hitting outside jump shots. Chalmers played like crap. I don't know what the hell he was doing in there. So many turnovers, bad passing mistakes. I don't know what Spolster was thinking. 
It just wasn't Chalmers' night. Same thing with Dwayne Wade. He couldn't get going, so stop forcing it to him. Ray Allen was hot. LeBron James was hot. Mike Miller was hot. Go to those three until they're dead. All right? Enough said. Uh, Spurs, uh, just incredible by Tim Duncan. Uh, just putting up monster numbers at his age. And, uh, you know, the amount of teamwork between him and Ginobili and Parker. Uh, Parker could not get past LeBron James. Who can? Um, so I'm not blaming him. And I think Duncan stepped up big time. Uh, Ginobili's got to step up more as, as well as that supporting cast if the Spurs are to win. Uh, in my opinion, you stick with the same game plan that Spolster seems to continue to not try and do anything about, and that's just pack that zone in and make LeBron James and Dwayne Wade shoot the ball. They look scared to shoot the basketball. Absolutely dead scared to shoot the basketball. LeBron James refused to take an outside jump shot until the very last fourth quarter or an overtime period. Dwayne Wade, I don't even think he was going to be willing to put up a mid-range jump shot until the end. And then he was taking turnaround faded, the fadeaways. They gave him all this room in the court. Could have just easily hit the mid-range jump shot. And they got to start making that consistently. They start making that consistently, they will open up that paint, and then you can drive the ball in and hammer it in like they want to. Uh, I totally get that they want to bring it in in close range close-in shots, but you got Duncan and Splitter sitting in the middle of the paint, along with, uh, you know, whoever's guarding LeBron James or Dwayne Wade, you're not going to score. It's too hard in there, even as talented as those guys are. Uh, so I think those are the, the main keys to the, this next game. It's going to be really, really interesting. Uh, Bosch, he's definitely got to be willing to shoot. He's not even looking to put up a shot, nor are the, any, any of the other Miami players uh, unless they're beyond that three-point arc or they're Ray Allen. Um, they can't be scared to shoot the ball. You've got to have somebody else who's going to score from that outside perimeter. Bosch, if he starts doing that and he can start bringing uh, Duncan out of that paint, opens things up again. So you've got to get those big three to be willing to take a few mid-range jump shots. I'm not saying settle for them every time you get a chance, but if they start clogging that paint, start shooting some mid-range jump shots, start hitting some, then bring the defense out, then you can attack and use that size advantage uh, that LeBron James has in those driving capabilities that Dwayne Wade has and finish at the rim, get the and one, and just move on. Uh, also I'd like to add the officiating in the first three quarters was pretty bad. Um, they were blind. <laughs> I don't know, it was just like watching two separate games. And uh, then in the fourth quarter that Danny Green play that that was mm -hmm. that was a foul uh, I think personally not at the overtime period but the uh, the one where I think it was Kawhi Leonard or maybe it was Green who drove the ball um, so hopefully the officiating will get a lot better uh, Miami's got to do a better job of uh, you know just not sitting down on the floor and waiting for the call too many times LeBron James would end up on his backside on the other end and it would be a fast break for the Spurs going the other way and he was just sitting down there complaining. He's got to get up off his butt, sprint back down to the other end, and then complain when the whistle is, when the game stops. Um, but all, overall, just a really entertaining game. I'm not trying to be a downer on the series at all. Uh, really incredible. Uh, if you want to uh, show a team how to play, you want to watch the San Antonio Spurs. If you can get your team to copy the way they play, you are going to be incredibly well off. Uh, I think it's an absolute coaching brilliance by Popovich. Uh, that guy is an absolute mastermind and uh, one of the all-time greatest coaches. Uh, so much love for Popovich. Awesome, awesome guy um, from a coaching standpoint. I don't know him personally. Uh, and uh, Spolstra, mm, I, I'm just, I haven't liked him since he was hired. Uh, I really think that Pat Riley should be the coach right now for the Heat. Uh, I think he should have for a while. Um, you've got all that talent. It doesn't take a very good coach to get them there. And uh, obviously, I think that's being proven. I think the series would have been ended in four, maybe five games if you had a reasonable coach. Um, and uh, I think things to work on for the Heat during the offseason. Definitely got to work on that mid-range jump shot for Dwayne Wade and LeBron James and confidence on Chris, for Chris Bosh on the offensive end. Uh, he's got to sh start taking some shots and feeling comfortable. Defensively, Bosh was awesome. Um, 
Anyway, that'll do it. Talk to you guys later.